If you're the kind of truck shopper that wants to be able to tow three to 400 miles without stopping, this is not a good truck for you to choose. However, towing is not as common in the half ton segment as a lot of folks think. Far more half ton owners haul on a regular basis than tow on a regular basis, which is why this video is all about efficiency when hauling near your payload. It's pretty common for half ton truck owners to head out to Home Depot, buy some concrete, buy whatever, go out on road trips. Maybe you're gonna put a camper shell or something like that on the back of your F-150. Maybe we'll try that in a later video. But in this video, we're just gonna talk about how cargo affects range. So clearly the first thing we need to do is head out to Home Depot and fill the bed. Thankfully, this truck has the onboard scales set up, so I'll be able to know exactly how much weight I'm putting in the truck. All right, here we are at Lowe's. I have 24 bags of potting soil, 120 pounds of salt, and an umbrella. Hey, why not? Let's go see how this works in the Lightning. We're just gonna load it up, and I'm gonna put the salt in the front trunk because Ford says you can put up to 400 pounds up there. Let's find out how that works. One really handy feature about the onboard scales functionality is we have this passenger and cargo load reminder. So you could say, well, you know, I'm make, I know that I'm going to have uh, 450 pounds worth of passengers in the vehicle, so go ahead and remind me about that. And you can see that then it goes up and over the limit. But if we just uncheck that, everything is in the vehicle as it needs to be right now. And as you can see, we're just under the limit. This is a really cool feature. I wish more vehicles had this kind of payload estimation uh, because payload is really important to keep in mind if you're talking about vehicle stability out on the road. Since I'm a details kind of guy, it's time to break out the digital scale, weigh the bags, and then of course, weigh that umbrella, see what we're talking. First, let's grab a bag of potting soil, see what this is. Again, it is 36.5 pounds. And how about the umbrella? 18 and a half. And because apparently my math skills are bad, it's actually 160 pounds of salt, not 120 pounds of salt, because they are 40 pound bags that gives us a total payload of 1,054 pounds, plus of course, me. So with a total of 1,200 <clears throat> pounds of payload, let's go and see what the fuel economy impact is on this Lightning, then let's do it with the Rivian. I decided to reshoot this part of this video in the studio because it got really long winded out there in the parking lot with the trucks. And instead, let's just get to the numbers. I used a 60 mile test loop on both of these trucks, average speed of 69 miles an hour, and both trucks were allowed to be on with the air conditioning running to cool down the cabin and allow the truck to precondition the battery. Whether it wanted to cool it or heat it, we let it do its thing for 20 minutes on both of these trucks. We then completed the loop with the trucks full and with the trucks empty so that way we could see the difference here. With the trucks empty, the Lightning averaged 2.2 miles per kilowatt hour, giving it a theoretical range of around 280 miles at 69 miles an hour. That's pretty similar to what the EPA estimate for this particular vehicle is. It's about 283 on the highway and very similar to what I've seen in my testing as well. Rivian, pretty similar to testing as well. It got 2.5 miles per kilowatt hour. So about 320 miles of range or so at 69 miles an hour on this test loop. Then we loaded them up and then we drove them along. Now let's get to the numbers. How much range did each of these trucks lose? The Rivian lost 42 miles of range, the Lightning a little bit better at 39 miles of range, or about a 12% reduction versus 13% in the Rivian. I think the reason is that the Rivian's cargo area is smaller. The bed is definitely smaller, so things like the umbrella, it was sticking up a little bit more and perhaps created a bit more wind resistance, making things just a little bit less efficient. But the majority of the difference as far as efficiency goes in the Lightning really just is the weight because most of those items were well within the profile of the bed. So aerodynamically, things might have changed a little bit, but the difference was not huge. What really changed was the contact patch of the tires on the road and, of course, the friction that we have against the road as well. And that's why it ended up losing 39 miles of range. I must admit that going into this, I did not expect the range reduction to be this large. I expected the reduction in efficiency to be more like 5%, not 12 to 13%. On the other hand, if I was driving a V8 powered gasoline pickup truck and I was only getting 14 to 16 miles per gallon, I might not even notice a 10% reduction in range because that would be a fairly small reduction. It might just be a rounding error and I would care about it a little bit less than in an electric truck. For some folks out there that want to do A to B style road trips, you want to go 400, 500 miles, 
This will mean a little bit of extra time on a DC fast charger if you have your truck fully loaded. How much longer? That's going to depend on where in the battery state of charge range you're doing your DC fast charging. But if you pull into a station at 10%, it's only going to mean a few extra minutes at that DC fast charge station to recover the 39 to 45 miles of range that you might be losing. You could also inflate your tires a bit more and likely reduce this number a bit. And that is one thing that I did not try in this test. We might do that at a later date. If you are familiar with trucks and their payload ranges, you know that a lot of times Sometimes manufacturers will specify or recommend that you bump up the tire pressure a little bit if you're going to be towing or if you're going to be hauling at the payload maximum of your truck. Both of these were set at the window sticker range on the truck, however, and that is what these manufacturers appear to recommend. But some folks out there may prefer to go up a little bit higher, say to the rated PSI rating on the tire itself, which sometimes is a little bit higher than the window sticker, especially in the back of a truck when fully loaded, that will likely have a positive impact on your range. It may end up reducing the friction of the tires on the road because, of course, the profile will change a little bit. Again, details on that are a little bit sketchy at the moment. Let me know what you think about all this down there in the comment section. And are you surprised that we saw a range reduction of 12 to 13 percent? Or is that about what you expected? Let me know if you've had any similar experience in your lightning or your R1T, just pop those comments down there in the comment section below and stay tuned because we have a number of different videos coming up soon. See all of you later.